All right. All right, family. Y'all know I'm on my 9-11 vibes. Thanks for being patient. <clears throat> About to get started. Oh, man. You had a busy day today, family, but thanks for being patient. I, I um, Y'all seen I was in Florida yesterday with uh, Billy and um, Dr. B. Let me get to a quick commercial for my King Simon. And um, I'm going to bring on my guest because we got a amazing show for y'all tonight. Let me get to this quick commercial. Be right back, family. The legendary Professor James Smalls come to Atlanta, Georgia for two days. April 6th and April 7th. You don't want to miss it. He's doing a public and a private event. Text me right now at 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. The legendary Professor James Smalls, as you've seen him on Hidden Colors and all the rest of the documentaries. Make sure you go to my link tree at linktree forward slash King Simon and Numero Beta. Professor James Smalls in Atlanta, April 6th and April 7th. Also, before we get started, I want to give it. Drew, you can hear me, right? I can. Okay. Yeah, I want to give a quick shout out. Um, one of the winners for the God Power Workshop. I'm actually wearing his merch right now. I told the brother I will wear it. Um, this shirt right here says E Snap Clan. No, Snap Clan. The brother's name is E Snap. I want to give him a shout out. Y'all can go support the brother if y'all would like at snapclanmerch.com. That's S N A P P. K L A N N M E R C H dot com. Uh, the brother's also on Instagram at Snap Clan. We all can support the brother in his merch. Shout out to the brother right there. I think if I put his barcode up, y'all might be able just to scan it. I don't know how I don't know how that barcode on the on the card works, but shout out to his brother right here. Shout out to everybody who won the God Power um chance, the opportunity to meet me and um Dr. B and Billy. You know, I appreciate that. That's big when I that came from my heart. So everybody who reached out and bought tickets to that, that means a lot. Uh, with that being said, we got a um, words of power and um, titles that we take on are powerful. And um, I, I'm gonna have what well, is an amazing show tonight. We're gonna have dealing with that uh, family. I want to welcome back to the platform. Y'all know this brother, the the Reverend Knight, the Never Daughter <laughs> of Our Time. Jack, jackpot, jackpot, Jew. What's going on? What's happening, jackpot, family? Jew. Jew, everybody say they hit the jackpot. What's up with you? You know, every every speaker brings something different to my platform. Something about you, people be like they hit the jackpot when they when they come across you. They they get checks and shit like that. What you the money man out here, brother? How you become the money man, bro? Like, man, that's you a, know. That's something hard to, hard to accomplish for a lot of people. Uh, That's Jude. a great question, man. Um, money, man. Just like, man, Rich, this stuff be so easy, bro. <clears throat> it's that it really is, man. I, I just tell people, like, just see yourself going to your mailbox and it's a check there. Whew. That simple. Just like that. Just like that. And they, you know, a few weeks go by and they be like, man, Jew, I got a check and another check. And another check. Mm. Uh, I was showing my wife a, a throwback check that she manifested. Mm. I'd be having her play these little mind hack games. Dope, dope, dope. And, uh, you know, so yeah, man. But nah, man. So it just come, you know, with the territory over the years of teaching. A lot of people have been blessed and continue to be blessed. And in, in the financial domain, as, as far as people who are really serious about it, who really don't put <clears> the <throat> work in. Mm. Um, but I, that's how I came about the name. I think uh, who gave me that name? Some one of my members gave me that name, and it just <laughs> stuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jackpot Jew. Hey, Jackpot Jew. Listen, speaking of taking on names, um, bad boy. That's a title. That's a frequency. That's a name. Mm -hmm. Um, and these names that we take on are vibrations, and they will follow us. And we Absolutely. seem to live out. The, the vibration of these names and I remember Snoop just to give you, you Snoop as an example oh that's dope serious just to use Snoop just to use Snoop as an example um he said when he was when he wrote murder murder she wrote or you ain't gonna believe there? this you ain't gonna believe this but go ahead but, go ahead I think that's when he got charged with murder and he found out the power of the pen that's and he was right. like shit he was like yo he ain't never write a record like that after I think that's right. But you look at these artists, you know, our artists, uh, music is one of the most, most powerful things in the world. 
and these artists that have these names, look at C Murder. Mm -hmm. C Murder is doing life in jail for murder. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. and, and Jew, Jew, the list goes on and on and on and on. That's right. I remember That's right. my boy, and I'm going to use this last example, and I'm going to let you go off and do your thing because I know you go, you Jew's dropping it tonight because we're talking about, you know, everything going on with Diddy, but we're viewing it with a metaphysical lens to show the people when you take on names and certain aspects of cultures and identities, how it affects you. Uh, affects you. That's right. Um, I remember my boy, we was young. We probably like 19 years old, Jew. State property was popping. Remember state property? Yes. Yes. And they had the um that was um freeway Siegel you know, Siegel Oskino. Siegel Oskino. Right. That was Dame Dash and Jay-Z school for those who may not know. They had a clothing line called State Property. I remember my boys started wearing it heavy. Mm -hmm. As soon as he said Catholic school kid like me. I was I'm a Catholic school kid. Mm -hmm. As soon as he started wearing it, this month gets locked up out of nowhere. Yeah. And for over a month for some silly, silly nigga shit. Right, right. Nigga, he came home, he ain't wear that shit no more. Of course he not. wear that shit no more. <laughs> That's not funny. It's, but, it's, yeah, yeah. but no, no, yeah, it's, this, this, this shit, this thing we call frequency and vibration, it's real. So That's here right. we have the CEO of Bad Boy and the world, whole world is looking at him like, yo, this is a bad boy right here. Absolutely. But I'm gonna let you do your thing, Jew. Um, only you could do it like this. Talk to me. What's tell me what you think about what's going on, what you see, my brother. So I put a little slide together. Yes, sir. Like I always do. But tonight, um, I want to take it out of the domain, the domain of people. Mm -hmm. Uh and out of and even out of the domain of events, and I want to put it in the realm of concepts and ideas. Mm. Because uh you know, you, you had to be living under a rock not to know what's going on with P. Diddy mm -hmm. right now. Um, so everybody going to have a commentary on that. You know, did he do it? Did he not do it? The severity of the allegations, all of these things. I'm not here to address really none of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one purpose and one mission. And, and my one purpose and one mission is to be an ambassador of this light. Mm -hmm. And anywhere... <laughs> I'm able to see you good. this principle, this uh, concept shine its way through these cracks. You're going to teach. I'm going to teach. <laughs> I'm going to teach because, yes, because, you know, it's sometimes y'all hear me on here and I get into a lot of heavy scientific principles. You hear me talking about quantum mechanics, quantum physics. Right, right. Sometimes you may hear me get into my biblical bag, you know, and, and a lot of times I merge them, which I'm going to do, do, do tonight. Yes. But. You know, we got some demographic of people who aren't into no, they ain't really into no church or maybe mm -hmm. even spirituality, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have, uh, you know, they just that's just not their thing. But there's another demographic in hip hop where hip hop essentially is like all that they have. Mm. Right. They mm -hmm. look to these artists for uh uh guidance yes they do right so you you might have hear, heard ice cube in an interview a while back that talks about hip-hop to prison pipeline all these different things but that can only happen how it means that the author the speaker the poet in his words and or her words especially in today's climate because a lot of the women mcs are having major impact in the community mm -hmm. what we have to understand is that we have they have a influence now a lot of times they don't want to hear that yeah right because it feels like it's placing a burden but there's a science to this oh yeah and let me tell you as scripture says there is no respect of persons mm. and so with me saying that i'm not here to disrespect anybody but at mm -hmm. the same time, I got a launch from the platform of which I know this thing to be. And so let's yeah. see, Jude, what happens if I and, do and Real quick, let me just give one more example for everybody that knows Jay-Z calls himself Jehovah, and he's looked at as the god of rap. So that's just a, a example of somebody who may have used this science in a positive regard, 
and he's looked at as everybody sees him as the god of hip hop, and they everybody goes around calling Jay Jay Hova. So this thing could be could, can help you, could help you, hurt you, whatever it, you know. It could go either way. So just be careful of what you out there calling yourselves, family. But go ahead, you. What Jay say on one of them records, man? He said, he said, he said, y'all viewing y'all version of the Lord. <laughs> He said, I'm the God MC. <laughs> right? He said, yeah. He said that on, I think that was on that Kingdom Come album. But anyways, <laughs> oh, so um, I'm opening up with this, man, because a lot of this information is, is in the book that I wrote called Hip Hop Laws of Attraction. Yes. Um, I was, man, listen, I'm from the era of hip hop, man. Like, you know, you grow up, you can't wait to, the rec you remember Rich, the records come out on Friday, you can't <clears> wait to get to the store to get the CDs, you know, uh, who's going to uh, release the newest track on your on your local radio station to hear what MC is dropping, some new music, yeah. all that type of thing. So I come from that particular era, late 90s, you know, mid 90s, 95, 2000, right up in there was the golden era for Jew, <clears> right? <throat> now, in this book, I got into this principle heavy, and we're going to demonstrate that tonight. I'm going to show you how Rich said, used the word frequency, the bad boy frequency. Let me show you, though. Mm -hmm. So Rich opened up with Snoop, right? Mm -hmm. now, now, watch watch this, Rich. Now, we're going to read this first, but keep that in mind, because, see, this is how you know this thing be moving in a direction where uh, everything is just falling into alignment mm -hmm. at the proper time. Mm -hmm. in the proper place right so i want to read this first because we got to set the foundation for what the conversation piece is going to be tonight you've right. got to understand this principle if you are going to grasp what i'm saying tonight so here is a study from the wiseman institute of science quantum theory demonstrated observation affects reality you have to get this down february 27 1998 one of the most bizarre premises of quantum theory, which has long fascinated philosophers and physicists alike, states that by the very act of watching, the observer affects the observed reality. Ladies and gentlemen, that's me, that's you, that's everybody else with eyeballs, right? Now, if you look over to the right or which on my screen, it says... I'm just going to read the last paragraph, on, uh, last sentence on this. The experiment revealed that the greater the amount of watching, the greater the observer's influence on what actually takes place. So that means the more people watch it, mm -hmm. now, now this will give you insight to advertisement and right. why people is getting checks. For attention because these people understand this how many eyeballs can i get on this thing in order to influence or impact buying habits right that's just one avenue that this can be viewed from but but tonight we're going to take it upstairs but before we do that you have to understand this premise as well your brain on imagination is a lot like reality. Study show, December 10th, 2018, University of Colorado Boulder. I always come on this platform or anytime that I'm opening my mouth to the public, y'all got to see some real receipts so that you, it's we're not guessing about what's going on here. So new brain imaging research shows that imagining a threat lights up a similar region as experience and it does, it suggests imagination can be a powerful tool in overcoming phobias, post-traumatic stress, da 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 Not to downplay that because we do use that too and with some of the techniques that we have, positive trauma path, all other kind of stuff. But for the main focus here, we need to focus on how the brain on reality is just like the brain on imagination. Same thing. Same thing. Mm. Same thing. So when you see where we're going with this conversation, you're going to know why these things are happening the way that they do and how by us 
as this entangled observer effect, all of the billions, millions of people on planet Earth, all of the people tuned in to the television. I used to say this all the time earlier on Rich Platform, that the TV ain't nothing but an external hippocampus. That's all it is. An external hippocampus. Wow. That's it. Love it. Love it, bro. Love it. Right? Yeah. So <clears throat> we've all heard this phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Why? Because we're going to get into the photogenic part of our consciousness that reproduces external events. And I want y'all to take this scripture with you at the onslaught of this conversation. Because you will understand clearly why I'm putting this up front. John 10 and 18 says, no man taketh my life from me. Now, this is supposed to be Christ consciousness talking, Rich. No man takes my life from me, but I lay it down myself. Keep this in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of times we think it's a boogeyman. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. It is by our lack of understanding how we're made that we create chaos, death, misfortune. The same way we create peace, prosperity and love. So what this state of consciousness is reflecting is that, look, Ain't nobody doing nothing. It is I who am responsible. So let's look. Who did you mention, Rich? Right out the gate. Snoop Dogg. This, this is my first slide. <laughs> we tapped in, Ju. We tapped Ju. in. We tapped in. <laughs> we tapped in. I said, well, as soon as he said it, I said, oh, boy, it's going to be one of them type of nights. <laughs> oh, man. So here's the receipt, Breakfast Club, May 20th, 2018. This is Snoop Dogg. He's discussing the 1996 murder case. Y'all remember the record? Classic Snoop Dogg record. And he's on the Breakfast Club saying what? He says Snoop Dogg recalls writing murder was the case a year before catching the actual, actual murder. murder case. Amazing. Listen what he said, though, because it's hip hop tonight, baby. So we just going to go through these hip hop examples. Yeah. Right. Diddy being the catas and we're going to get the Diddy. Trust me. But I got to build up this evidence so that you can see, oh, maybe one time it's a fluke. Oh, maybe two times it's by chance. No, no, we're going to make sure that you don't see this ain't by no mistake. It ain't happenstance. It ain't luck. It ain't none of that. Yeah. So he says, my peers, we wrote about death. You see, and I wrote the song Murder Was the Case where I was like, I came in with my boo-boo who's about to have my baby. But check this out, Rich. She wasn't even pregnant. Mm. And I hadn't even caught the murder case. He said of the iconic 1993 track taken from his debut studio album, Doggy Style. He said, that's the effing crazy part about it. He was born May 20th, right? 1994. The murder case was in August of 1993. So I wrote murder was the case about some shit that had never happened in my life. Mm. I didn't have a baby. I didn't have a murder case, but my penmanship was writing things that was about to happen. We're going to edit this for Snoop. Because, see, sometimes they still be in denial. It, in Scripture, it's the stone that the builders rejected. They, 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 they're they on to it, but they still can't quite come to this full self-realization. He said, I was writing about things that was about to happen. No, 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 Snoop. You were writing things, creating them to happen. Mm. Mm. You see... It's impossible to write about things that's about to happen, huh? Thank you. Let me take some. Contrary to popular belief, ain't no fiction, people. Mm. No such thing as fiction. Listen, listen. Do you know your brain when it sees things that, like in the movies where, you know, Frankenstein's head spinning around, you know, 
the all around, around, around. Do you know your brain looks at that, does a mathematical equation, and starts to process ways to make that a reality? Mm. I should have added that case study here, but that's an actual fact. The brain doesn't view things that we would consider to be fictional or out of the scope of potentiality to be false. It immediately starts to go into hyperdrive to figure out how do we make this so. So your, your brain is saying to you, yes, 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 all the time. So we've heard this slogan before. We've heard this slogan before. The pen is mighty than the sword. If you only knew what you could do with a pen. Mm. But see, everybody knows about Tahuti, Hermes Tresmegistus, the, the Mercurial Prince, everybody's on a magician thing, but how many of you are actually scribing your reality into existence? Right. Where's the practice at in that? So let's read this, Drew. Because you mentioned it about your, your homie wearing the, wearing the clothes, all of these, the names these rappers got, et cetera. But listen to what Matthew 12, 36 through 37 say. For every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Mm. And excuse me for the people who may be new to minister Jew. I use this text as a psychological masterpiece because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. If you're still worrying about the Jesuits or this group or who, if you're still worried about that, let me tell you something. You're missing out on a wealth right. of applicable information that will change your life if you knew it was a text speaking in idioms, allegories, parables, in order to relate heavy concepts of mind at a very low threshold where a person who may not have that level of intellect to be able to receive it. And it speaks to every possible state of existence that can possibly exist. From the Proverbs 31 woman to the prostitute Rahab. <laughs> and everything in between. So a lot of times we, we, we're in our feelings about it because it's like, oh man, well, they was, they was, they were saying slavery was cool. Well, isn't slavery a state? We see, we mm. get upset at the state. That state exists though. Even though you might be mad at it, you might not like it, that state exists. And so it speaks to that state. But then you may have Paul who says he was he was he was paying money to get the slaves free in scripture. But that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> right. So by your words. By your words, you will either be justified, meaning uplifted or you will be condemned. So it's totally up to you and what you're uttering out of your mouth. But let's move forward, you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh boy. Y'all know who this is on y'all screen, right? Mr. Tory Lane. We all know what happened to Tory, right? We all know. Everybody know. He's locked up right now. But let me show you the cause. So. When COVID was going on, they locked his account up, Rich, because he was he had some, you know, some some things on there that let's just say isn't friendly or TV friendly, internet friendly per se, right? And he went on to make a, another account, right? And he put on this orange jumpsuit. Like he's sitting on the bed in a cell. He think he thinking this is just art, people. See, this, see, this is why the last words on the cross was, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." So he's sitting in a cell. 
You see the, the, the guard locking them up, locking the cell up, throwing away the key. He posing all in the cell. You see this, right? Now he's thinking he's making imagery to relate to the idea that they've Instagram has held them captive. So now it's free Tory. In other words, free my account. Let me let me live. So then he goes and puts this out in association with what just happened to him getting banned off that social media network. But he chose to use this imagery and then added the hashtag free Tory. Damn, damn, Joe, you took it there. Listen, damn, you took it there. This is April 7th, 2020. These are these these are time stamped people right right damn see see but ah, ah, you work in the law and you are conscious of it but whether you conscious of it or not the law is always working now what do they tell you in the courts rich ignorance of the law is of no excuse mm. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Right? So y'all looking at the picture. Now this is April 2020. Got hundreds of thousands of retweets all on Twitter. People hashtagging free Tory. At that time, he's free as a bird, though. And what you said in the beginning with the eyes that's on it, the eyes, all the Thank eyes. you. The retweets, that's a lot of the eyes. Retweets. Those are the eyes. So now guess what's happening? The people are playing part and parcel to help collapse the wave. Mm. Now, guess what? People may look at, you know, oh, did he shoot her in the foot? Oh, what happened at the party? Oh, listen, all of that is an effect. That's the bridge of incident. Right. See, whatever has to happen will happen. Because somehow, Tori, you got to be in an orange jumpsuit, buddy. Damn. See, see, this is the law of attraction going wrong. <laughs> right? And so then what happens, you? What happens, you? If you go back and you listen to this Tory Lane's freestyle on Flex, right? Mm -hmm. You go back and listen to this freestyle. Now, this is this is before the, the free Tory. This is before the, the actual situation with Megan, right? Mm-hmm. You know what one of the lyrics was in this freestyle? Yeah. And excuse my language for maybe for the older people, but I just got to say it how he said it, right? He said, I'm shooting bitches at the pool. Damn. When I heard that, when I, when I, I, I said, wait a minute. Did he really say that, Jew? <laughs> Right? Because I'm putting the pieces to the puzzle together in hindsight, looking at everything <clears throat> to add into the computation. And guess how everything unfolded? Was it not a pool party? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Were they not in bathing suits in the street when the police rolled up on them? See, no man taketh my life, I lay it down myself. Mm. Right? So here's another example. YNW Melly. Oh boy. Oh boy. Murder's on my mind. The name of the video, Rich. In the video, he mistakenly shoots. His homie, Rich. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. This is in the video now. Mm -hmm. And then what happens in real life? Supposed to be his homies. Some murky situation. Don't nobody really know exactly what happened. They just know they was all together. And what's supposed to be some of his closest homies are shot dead. Mm, mm, mm. But see, now he's having to face the music of what they thought was just art. 
Another example. PNB Rock. PNB Rock. He says, I will never be robbed. Right? Okay. Okay. And then he goes on to make a music video. I didn't even know this, bro. Man, I didn't even know this. Man, listen, Rich. Damn, PNB. I'm going to keep your receipts. I didn't even know that. <laughs> right? So somebody has to be the messenger to hip hop. Listen, y'all. Y'all wizards and don't know it. Juice, somebody real important I'm going to reach out to you after this one tonight. In okay. a high place. Okay. I can feel that shit, man. Absolutely. There's some shit here, man. Absolutely. Mm. And then what happens, y'all? The same man that say he'll never get robbed. And see, I wish I would have put that in here about the ironic processing theory and using the words never, don't, won't, and how they actually trips to the subconscious mind to bring forth exactly what you say you don't want and never will happen. Right. Yeah. Boy. But see, it's really coming from a place of fear mm. of it happening. That's why you say it like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So then, but Job tells us, oh, I told y'all, this is this is, this is a psychological masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. Mm. <laughs> really? And then I can show you the neuroscience to bag up this ancient verse that speaks directly to this. Right? So here's the science. Fear and other emotions and other emotions similar to it activate this drawing power or magnetizing influence and has more power in its outcome than positive emotions do. Mm -hmm. Damn, more powerful than pop than positive emotions. Rich. Oh man. Rich. Rich. Listen, do you know you got whole books out here? where they're teaching people to use reverse psychology with themselves to actually use the words don't, not, yeah. and can't. Ne Neville taught that. Yeah. Neville taught that. yeah. To, to actually bring forth the experience. Yeah. yeah. Man, I'd never get a million dollars. <laughs> right? But this all comes down to learning how you're made. Where was this at? Functional mapping of dynamic, happy, and fearful facial expressions. Processing and adolescence brain imaging behavior 2010. They go to receipts for the people that won't direct, you know, state your sources. There you go for the sources, people. <laughs> right. I don't I don't got no problem with that. Mm. Right. Oh boy, here's another. Now look, here's the book. Here's the physical book. Here by laws of attraction. Y'all can see it. So, so <clears throat> I coached the DOC for about 15 months. He saw some stuff somewhere. Noble made the connection. And I end up building a really firm relationship with the DOC. For y'all who don't know who the DOC is, um, wrote, a lot of wrote a lot of the lyrics for Dr. Dre on the Chronic album, some other uh, music as well. Um, had a very promising career early in his career, uh, wrapped alongside of Ice Cube, Easy E, NWA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm talking to Doc, and I'm like, man, Doc, what happened, man? Because for those that don't know, the Doc, he lost, he, he damaged his voice box in a very bad car accident. And so I asked Doc, I said, Doc, I said, man, run me through the night. What happened? So he, he said, well, Jew, you know, uh, we had just finished shooting the video, the formula. And, you know, he told me that he was driving up to Dre's house. Um, and that when he made it up there, he was a little impaired. And so he he went back into the city, uh, stopped at Jerry's office. Easy was there. 
Uh, I say by that time, it may be about two o'clock in the morning. He decided to leave. Long story short, he fell asleep behind the wheel, uh, got thrown from the vehicle that he was in, and uh, was basically plastered to a tree. Um, paramedics had to come get him. No broken bones, um, lacerations, of course. Uh, but when he woke up, he, you know, he had gauze and everything else, you know, around his throat. And um, he said the impact from him hitting the tree damaged a portion of his voice box or his throat where it impaired him from being able to talk regularly. Um, and so I said, okay. And so I went back to go watch the video that he said that he just had finished shooting uh, for his debut album called The Formula. So I go back and I'm watching the video, right, Rich? And when you watch the video, Rich, Dr. Dre is acting as a doctor and a surgeon, Rich. Wow. And he's operating on the DOC's neck. Man, oh man. The next time I talked to the doc, I said, Doc, I said, you remember the video you were shooting that you just wrapped up? He's like, yeah. I said, you, you remember what was going on in the video? And, and it hit him like the light bulb went off. Mm. See, a lot of and people don't be afraid. <laughs> the power that you have is limitless. Literally. But, but literally. But we are children. So you know how a child is when they they got something in their hands, they don't know quite how to use it, they don't understand the severity or the power of it. They'll misuse it or they'll harm themselves. <clears throat> so here we are with all of this power within us, right? It, and scripture quotes it too. The, he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. There's a force within you that is greater than your wildest dream. But you must learn how to cultivate it because when you do then you will use it in a way where it springs forth things that are delightful things that are pleasant right and so the doc be everywhere talking about the story of how he lost his voice so y'all can go check him out y'all can go hear it from his mouth yourself so here we go. Here we go. Let's get the let's get the ditty. Let's get the ditty out. Let's get the ditty. Oh man. So here's a tweet. Right? Can't make this up, man. Can't make this up. Diddy's house is being raided on the anniversary of kicking the door is insane. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all remember the Biggie record? Burr, 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 burr. This goes out to you, you, you. Shout out, shout out DJ Premier. He did that beat. Right? Yeah. So on the day that that record drops, Diddy's door is literally being kicked in. See, this is this quantum entanglement thing that y'all hear me talk about. And y'all may have heard me mention this phrase before. Space itself is intelligent. Mm. The empty stuff that you, you look out and you look like, oh, is this a black sky? No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. It's plenty of juice in there. Mm. Plenty of juice. It's recording everything. And let me tell you this too. You got a larger cosmic body. You, you see, you think you just reduced to this. Mm -hmm. 
But see, scripture tell you that too. It tells you that you will be resurrected into your cosmic body, your heavenly body. They're telling you that there's 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 two of you. <laughs> see, and so it's like any you know how the animals mark their territory and they mark their space. And they know when they go back sniffing over in that spot, this is my territory. X marks the spot. Let me tell you something. Whenever there's impactful events that happen to you in your life, space is monitoring. Space is calculating. Space is registering. Oh, shoot. Hold up, uh, Jew. Um, mm -hmm. The brother E. Snap in the chat also said, this is very interesting. Uh, where is it at? The chat moving so fast. Um, that 1997, which was the year uh, Big was murdered, was a number eight year in numerology. Mm. We in an eight year right now. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> That's a, wow. There you go. Wow. There you go. So what's happening here is when events take place, these things get logged into space. Yeah. And when another event is on the horizon mm -hmm. and it gets back into that same pocket, it's like you going to the library, checking out that same book again. Mm -hmm. So then people say stuff like this. Mace would say, it's amazing that all this transpires on that day, referring to uh, the 27th anniversary of Life After Death album. He says, that's eerie. See, that's the best thing that we can say because when you really don't know, what else you gonna say? Like, man, that's kind of spooky. Mm. You know, you know that, that Einstein talk, that, that's that spooky, spooky action, action, at, action distance. at a distance. <laughs> but it's just a law. It's just a law. Right? And this is, this is why I laugh at spirit, right? This is why, this is why it'd be funny. So I go to look at and shout out to Noble. He actually let, put me on the trail to this. That sample for kicking the door on this album right here. The sample is from a person named Jay Hawkins called I Put a Spell on You. Mm. <laughs> now, why am I saying that? People, we're placing ourselves under suggestion depending upon what you call yourself, depending upon what type of imagery you're projecting to the world, depending upon what you're uh, ruminating in your psychology on a regular basis. You'll put a spell on yourself, whether good or bad. Now, people call it all kinds of things. Don't get all caught up. Oh, a spell is evil. Uh, don't, that's, we have to get past that and just look at the function of what's taking place. Right. And so Romans 2 and 14 says, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law. Now, when I say that, I'm talking, they're not talking about the people, even though you may read and think people, oh, the Gentiles and the Jews. No, 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 no. These are, again, this is a state of awareness. This is a state of kindness. The Gentile is a person who simply just doesn't understand this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So when a person who doesn't understand the phenomenon, i.e. they don't know the law, but by nature, do the things that are contained in the law, right? PNB Rock, YNW Melly, right? All these people, these having not the law become a law to themselves. So this is what I mean, meant when I started this conversation. It doesn't matter if you know or not. Yeah. You're operating a universal principle. You think gravity cares if you know that it's gravity? It doesn't matter. You think thermodynamics cares because you don't know what, the, it doesn't matter. These are principles. Mm -hmm. And in the Hermetic text, they tell us very powerful line. It says, he who masters mind and speech will be just as the gods. So they are trying to tell you something. 
The one who masters mentalism, how the mind works, and what he says from that understanding becomes a master of his environment. Dictates what will come in and what will go out. He's no longer, quote unquote, a slave to the elements. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Right? So let's look at Diddy. Oh boy. 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 Here's a video, y'all. <laughs> oh, you taking it, did you? Come on, oh, brother. Oh, you took it to the video? Been around the world? Now, if you go watch the video, Puff Daddy <laughs> is getting on his private jet. Now, mind you guys, this is 1997. Keep this in mind. This is 1997. Puff Daddy is about to board his jet and he looks down the runway and guess who is coming to arrest him, Rich? Alphabet the fed, Boys. The feds. Yeah. And he jumps in his plane and takes off before the alphabet boys can get to him. Now, mind you, when the video first comes on, it's Vivica Fox, Quincy Jones, right? And listen, y'all, I'm giving y'all kingdom keys tonight. I'm trying to get y'all, listen, I'm trying to free the, I'm trying to free the people, man. And sometimes you gotta see it this way so that it, it really hits you at a deeper level of your being. Mm -hmm. Right, so, <clears throat> so he was living this double life in the video, right? On the front street, he was, you know, regular Diddy, family man, da da da. But then, and, and people, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Quincy Jones hit him up, and the whole premise of the video was. He was supposed to be going to this big old party, right? So if y'all been following the story with it, oh, it's but Diddy at all these party, party, party. So all of the elements of what's happening in reality now was actually in this video. So then what happened in real time? Well, <laughs> Diddy had to talk to the feds at the airport, man. Y'all see the jet? His associate was arrested at the airport with the guy Paul allegedly was supposed to be Diddy's drug dealer. But hold on, Jew. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go back to the video. And Mace is getting off the plane and he's opening up this box on the runway right before the feds get there. And he got condoms, money, and pills. And Diddy pops a couple of the pills and he's talking about going to party because the girls... The, 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 all of the princesses over here at this party supposed to be fine and Mace flaps out a rubber and it's party time so Diddy start popping the pills you can't listen I'm not making this up people <laughs> go watch the video <laughs> huh so then they what happened now, all of a sudden, they tracking jets down, Rich. In real time. 
everything in this video jumped off the screen and mm -hmm. literally became a physical objective reality but remember remember the brain can't tell the difference between what rich imagination and reality i'm trying to tell you and, and one more thing Ju, the only part of the brain that's an extension of the brain that we could see is the, is the eyes, eyes. You. I'm telling y'all, listen, this is why I don't have no other conversation piece. Because in my humble estimation, what is there else to do? Like, once you understand this, man, the ball game changes. Right, right, right. It right. changes. Mm -hmm. You know how much, you know what we could do collectively? Like, Rich, you know what we could do collectively? We had a think tank and we said, for a year straight, this the only image that we're going to hold in our psychology about whatever the goal is, mm. collectively. Mm -hmm. Somebody asking the name of the song. It's called Been Around the World. Go to YouTube. Put in Puff Daddy Future Mason, Notorious Big, Been Around the World. Bad Boy, and y'all see it right here. Same, same joint. It's like a 10-minute long video. Mm -mm. Right? So, <clears throat> right? I already, I, I, so, here's another one. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna wrap it up in a minute. Because I had to throw this one in there. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Young Thug in the system right now, right? Mm hmm Well, him and Gunner had a record that they put out two years before they ran into any trouble, right? Where well, they walking around with ankle monitors on, Rich. In the music video, and the name of the song is called Take It to Trial. Mm. <sighs> Listen, with 10 million views, and probably double that, because who else knows where people have been able to view this? And then two years later, almost in the same pocket of space, the feds came and got them. Hmm. Give me one second, Drew. Keep talking. Give me one second. Go ahead. So look, y'all. This is the name of the game. This is the name of the game. This is the name of the game. Because I, some of y'all may say, well, man, they, they, all the decisions that they made from that point forward, let me tell you something. They're under their own suggestion. They're under their own suggestion. And here's the thing. Whatever has to happen, in order for that image to be made manifest will happen right so isaiah 43 and 19 put it like this look i'm about to do something new it's coming and they they, they being poetic here do, do you not see it <laughs> but look what they say rich indeed i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert yeah so they're trying to give you the, the power of your consciousness, yeah. i.e. Lord. They're trying to tell you that, listen, whatever got to happen, what happened? If I got to put a river in the desert, in the desert shit. Come on, y'all don't feel that Holy Spirit with that? <laughs> that Bible's a powerful book, man. When you, when you know how to read it. When you I'm read telling it. you, <laughs> if I got to put oh. a river in the desert, to well, make this thing move, to get you to go to here and do this and all these steps that you got to take, that's what's going to happen. Right? Oh, now, sometime, 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 
it takes longer for seeds to develop. Yes. So we talking hip hop, right? But this was J. Cole. Got a partnership with porn. But look what he said, Rich, in his tweet. Been imagining this for <clears throat> 10 years. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's time. And then he, he, he captions it with the dreamer. He up on game. But look what it says. Seeds can be inactive for months or even years until the proper environment, environmental cues are activated. The term for this is called quiescence. So the three things that activate this inactive state, water, emotion, temperature, visualization, oxygen, spoken word. Uh, uh, uh. So really, I just gave you the correlation between the plant kingdom and your mental state. Right. 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 But showing you like like these things. Listen, especially when it's something uh, drastic. All of the moving parts have to be put in place. So it takes longer for the movie to develop. Right? So <clears throat> as Habaka says, the vision has its own time. It hurries to the goal. It will not fail. Though it delay or though it be long, wait. It's certainly going to come. It's certainly going to come. It's coming. Right? And so I wanted to add this little bonus. Y'all know the bridge. You know the bridge just fell in Baltimore, right, Rich? Yes, yes. Right? <clears throat> so one of my members sent me this. So Salvador Dali painted a picture called the broken bridge in the dream, right? 1944. The bridge in Baltimore collapses and guess what the name of the freight ship is, Rich? What? Dolly. Wow. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I don't know if my homie Tommy Gunn's watching tonight, but and this is what, see, let me tell you something. The invisible always leaves evidence, Rich, if you know right. what you're looking for. Right. This, the traces of the evidence is going to be there. And so I was telling my homie, I said, man, uh, y'all might, it's hip hop, so we, I'm going to quote Andre 3000. He said, he said, so I write like Edgar Allen to restore. Right? That's on the art of storytelling, part four, classic record, right? And Edgar Allan Poe wrote a book called The Nantucket. And I'm just I'm just giving people a more base for this, since you're looking at the the broken bridge by Dally, and then the ship that runs and crashes a bridge and breaks the bridge is named Dally. I want to show y'all this, so. In this book that Poe wrote called The Nantucket, he wrote it like it was a true story, but it was actually a fiction, right? And in this book, there were four crew members and a cabin boy. Well, the boat gets stranded at sea. They're out there for days and they run out of food in the book, right, Rich? So they get hungry and decide that they're going to kill the cabin boy and eat him. Mm. Now, this is in the book. This is in the book. About 60-some-odd years later, guess what happens? There's a boat that gets stranded at sea with four crew members and a cabin boy. They run out of food. They kill the cabin boy on the boat and decide to eat him. Now this is in real life. But here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. 
the boy's name that was eaten in the book name was Richard Parker. 60 some odd years later, the boy who was eaten in real life on the stranded boat name was Richard Parker. Mm, mm, mm. So what is fiction, ladies and gentlemen? Now, they made a spinoff on this. Who in the chat remembers the movie The Life of Pi? Who saw that movie with the little Indian boy? The, they were on a big boat, and the boat got capsized. I think his mother and father died in, in, in a crash, whatever, whatever. And so he gets stranded on this little lifeboat with a tiger. And, they na and he names the tiger in the movie Richard Parker. So they, they took that real life story and also the fiction that became that came before the real life story and put it in a movie, but they, they didn't they didn't they didn't make Richard Parker a person, they made Richard Parker a tiger. And so it was just an enactment of those two things that came before it, and they put it into a film. But those men who actually ate that boy in real life, Richard Parker, they actually went to jail behind that. I had the case history and everything. They showed the case, the queen brought up the charges, whole nine. So I'm saying all that to say, people, there is a power inside of you that is yearning to be used. And my mission as an ambassador of the light is to show you how to do it constructively to get the best out of you. Mm -hmm. And so although Puffy is going through whatever he's going through tonight or today or this week or this month or this year, if I have a long, <clears throat> they, they're going to have a day for whatever going to happen in that situation. But I wanted to use hip hop tonight and Puffy being the callus just to bring this back on home the, the way that I always do and point the finger back at the individual. Because Man, what I'm you going to do with yeah. your power? Indeed. Yeah, I mean, Jew, man, what? What? Uh, you, you dropped seventy. How, how much? How, how much, Drew? If this was a basketball game, family, how much did Drew drop? I mean, Drew, I said, how much did Jew drop tonight, y'all? If this was a basketball game, man, he had to drop at least seventy, y'all. He had to drop at least seventy, <laughs> y'all. Oh man, damn, Jew, you did your thing, my brother. I appreciate it, man. Listen, you did your thing, man. It's not just what you say; it's how you say it, brother. You got your voice and how you relay your message. You speak with so much passion. Um, I don't hear you speak; I feel you speak, brother. That's a gift. That's a gift that Ike, that that, that Reverend Ike had. So you definitely tapping into your purpose on Earth. Thank you. Somebody said, "Okay, no." Somebody said, "A solid." A solid 73. <laughs> no, no, no Chris say you dropped the you dropped a solid 73. You know oh, what I'm saying? Y'all so that, funny. Yeah, that's, Y'all funny. Y'all funny. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that, it though. That's powerful. Let me um somebody um give me. We're gonna get to a couple of questions. I gotta get out of here soon. We're gonna get to a couple of questions. Um, somebody asked. I took I took down a couple of questions while Jew was talking. I see somebody asked Rich, why did you choose to acknowledge this issue? And I'm trying to figure out why would you even ask that goddess T? Do you not see what happened tonight with this presentation? Like goddess T, sis, this was the perfect opportunity to show the people how the law works. And that's exactly what you did. Regardless of whatever happened, like you said, the law is going to make whatever has to happen happen in order for the law to happen. And we have to be aware, goddess T, of our vibration, how we speak, how we think, how we feel, uh, words that we take on, clothing that we wear. Like I gave the example, Goddess T, of my friend wearing state property. Um, some people, you know, the clothing people wear. I mean, we have to be conscious of this. This is not just entertainment. This is not just clothing. This is not just a hat. This is an actual frequency. There's a reason why I wear this. I've been wearing this for over, I think, a year and a half now with a tiger. It means something to my spirit. 
the jury that everything we do has divine purpose to it. So what Jew is basically saying is take heed to it. Take heed to your power. Don't take your power for granted, family. We are not just mere mortals who are here to work a regular job and then just die. If you have a job, that's perfectly fine. But the power that you encompass is absolutely amazing, Goddess T. And this brother's just here to remind us of this. And uh, we see it played out on the stage with the entertainment with the rappers, C-Murder, Snoop, Tupac, Biggie, Puff, over and over and over and over again, y'all. Over and over and over again. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I just want to real quick, Jew, I just All want right. to say, because we're talking about the mind and the oh, brain man. and the imagination. And I want to share this with the family about how this works. And um, I thought about this before. Somebody said, Brother Rich, they need to create the Seek Award for you, powerful guests on your powerful guests on your platform. I wanted to, the first thing, Jew, one of the first things, like we, we come from that culture, Jew, that era where hip hop was hip hop, it was powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was some of the dopest MCs that ever existed existed in the early 2000s, in the 90s, late 80s with Public Enemy. I mean, it was just a powerful uh, era for music before hip hop started to die down. Um, one of the things, uh, very first things I wanted to be when I was young, Jew, Jew was um, an a and mm -hmm. I wanted to be an a and I always felt as though I had the ability to find talent. I was yeah. amazed. I felt as though I know... I'm amazing at finding talent. I didn't know that. And, and I, I constantly imagined it, thought about it. Before I won, that transitioned into me being a producer because I felt as though I could produce the talent, not just find the talent. But initially, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an A&R so bad because mm -hmm. I wanted to find talent. I feel like I could find talent and put people on the platform and help them be the best version of themselves. I didn't know that that was going to turn into me finding spiritual talent, mm -hmm. such as yourself such as Rod Hayes, such as uh, whoever I'm, I'm, KT the Archery, or whoever I may bring on my platform. So now I got like one of the top spiritual platforms in the world with some of the dopest speakers in the world. And this is a result of me, majority of my life, imagining myself being in a position where I'm finding absolutely amazing talent mm -hmm. and putting them out there to the world and helping them to be the best version of themselves. I thought this this I thought about this for over 20. This is this me what I'm experiencing right now, brother Rich. What y'all see right now, black magic was over 30 years in the making, y'all. That's right. I thought about this in my mind for over 30 years. It sat in my mind and in my brain for over 30 years. So mm -hmm. when Jew talks about your dream, sometimes it may take a little longer. I didn't know it was gonna be spiritual talent. I knew it was gonna be talent. I just looked at it as musical talent, but the emotion was of talent. I got some of the dopest people in the world. Juice one of the baddest motherfuckers out there in the world, in the globe. He's on my channel tonight. Almost 3,000 people. This is a groundbreaking show. I'm proud of that. And I'm happy that I tapped into my imagination to make this happen. So that's what the brother is talking about. And I just want to share that story with y'all real quick about how I use my imagination when I was young, younger, to get to where I'm at today, family. That's right. See, Rich, I went over this the other day. That's very powerful, man. I not listen, man. I appreciate the opportunity, the yeah. platform, um, all of the people listening now, in the past, in the future, everybody on the timeline. Um, right. But see, Rich helped pull all of us here too. See, his vision, right, mm. is correlating with all of the other people's vision who've been on this platform. It's not by accident. I went over this the other day. It's called decoherence. Like everything's entangled with everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything. So as Rich is envisioning this happening this way, the people that are necessary to play out that role no, so yeah. that Rich's vision can be made manifest yeah. have to show up. Have to. Have to show up. You got to drop 70. I didn't say you got to drop 70, Jew. There's no way to get around it. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so uh, that's the beauty when people are resonating in the same space mentally. Yeah. Looking to bring something of value to somebody else. Because that's really what these this platform teaches. Man, this is what teachers do. They're looking to bring value to others. Mm-hmm. 
right? So that they can have a better experience from the words that they speak mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. people that are listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it brings me much joy. I, listen, man, Galatians 6 and 6 is like, that's my, that's one of my favorite verses where it says, come, come share, the good, come share the good news with the one that taught you. I'm more excited for the people's feedback, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. To see people yeah. having experience is, is the most important thing for me as a teacher. Facts. Before we get to a couple, I'll probably just do two questions, Joe. But before we do, Jew, I want, if we got 2,700 people in the chat, I want damn near, I want 80% of them to join your ministry. Tell the people how they can sign them because I don't want to wait to the end and half of them leave. So how okay. can they sign up and be a part of this so, jackpot Jew ministry? Oh, oh man. <laughs> so listen, man, uh, visit the website, theimaginationguru.com. Again, it's yeah. theimaginationguru.com. And you'll see a membership tab up there, a couple other tabs that people may be interested in the ebook, or if you want to purchase the book physically, you can get this off Amazon. But um, that's how you that's how you can join me, man. Join the ministry, man. We've been doing I've been doing this for a decade. A lot of people mm -hmm. be like, man, they thought I was new over here, rich. I'm like, man, I was over here, yeah, <laughs> rich. When this thing was when it was uh, you remember the horn used to go off yeah, in the intro? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So um that's where you can find me, man. Been doing it for a while. You can catch me on Instagram, Imagination Guru, the Imagination Guru. One of them handles can't remember. Is it the? I think it is mm -hmm. the Imagination Guru. But um, it's a library over there too, man. From years of study, years of just feeding the people this type of information consistently, man. So um, that's where you can find me: Instagram channel, um, website, the Imagination Guru, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I drop content usually like every Wednesday. But I didn't yesterday because I knew I was coming on Rich Platform. So I usually like to just go like once a week to kind of keep it slow and steady wins the race. But um, mm. that's where you can find me, man. Mm. Kelly Mills, shout out to everybody who remember the Underground uh, Radio days. Uh, that's what Jew is referring to. I got to link up with uh, Noble Ample. I got to get Ample back. He's still doing his thing with the um, yeah. astrology. Yeah, man, listen, Ample, listen, Ample is over east in China with uh, with not literally, but like what he's been practicing, yeah, he he's he's really mm -hmm. in his qigong practice, Dope. um, and so that's that's the state that he's in now. I think that brother got a lot to share. Um, mm -hmm. We went over some stuff about this eclipse coming up on the eighth on the previous presentation oh, okay. that we did publicly. Boy, it was bananas. Yeah, he so he's yeah. still doing the astro thing, but absolutely, he's he's still live right. in full effect. Yeah. I got it. You got to um, pass me his number uh, after the show. I, I'm going to highlight the brother, give him a call. I will. I talk to that brother in a while. But yeah, they, they, um, Jew and, um, and Pooh, they used to come and do their thing on Underground Railroad Radio uh, back before I even, this was when it was just audio and I would have like pictures up. No, you, you ain't seen none of our face. This was uh, over a decade ago, y'all. So yeah, it, it was all, it was awesome times. This brother, <laughs> somebody <laughs> asked me. Somebody asking in the chat too. I don't want to cut you, Rich. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, you know, go ahead, go ahead. Somebody asking. So listen. So I don't be playing with this science, people. Mm -hmm. I don't play with this thing. I don't know if y'all know that or not. Mm -hmm. But I listen, I put myself on the Mount Rushmore mm -hmm. with Bobby Hammond. Mm -hmm. Damn. Minister Jew. Jewel Pooper. And my partner Noble Land Pooper. Mm -hmm. Right, wow. because you have to see yourself, yeah, as one of the greats. Oh yeah, you have to. You have to embody the principle. You have yeah. to put yourself in the proximity of the greats, yeah. and you will produce similar outcomes. And I so remember. that's why I was asking in the chat, who was that? But yeah, yeah. that's Bobby, Jew, Jewel, that's and no, that's fire. That's fire. That Thank is fire. You. I remember just to keep it on the hip hop thing. I remember when Wayne, Lil Wayne, first said he he started going around saying he's the greatest rapper alive. That's right. And I'm like, in my mind, when I first heard it, you know, I'm younger. I'm like, what the fuck he talking about? This nigga ain't no <laughs> greatest rapper alive. Then after, and he kept being confident saying it. Then I remember listening to his music like a year later. I'm like, yo, he might be the greatest rapper alive. Bro. Like he really Bro. transformed, and he really. Took upon like there was a year when there was nothing but Lil Wayne on everywhere. Two years. Yeah, probably, probably about two. 
Listen, it was a time where it was really scary hours with Wayne. Yeah, yeah. It was like, what did he just say, bro? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah, yeah. When he when he was when he started to say that, like he was embodying that to the point where it was like, man, don't nobody want no problems with that guy. Yeah, and that was. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Kanye said he said, yeah. Kanye predicted damn near everything he's going through. Kanye, Yeezy, <laughs> Yeezy, he done, man. Listen, we could do a whole show on Yeezy. You ain't Yeezus. lying. You ain't we do lying. a whole show on Yeezy. Let me get to a shout out to all the super chats. I haven't had a time. It's been it's just been moving so fast. I just want to give a shout out to all the super chat. Shout out to the brother uh, E Snap. This is the brother who I'm wearing his merch once again. Family, shout out to that brother. He was the God Power Two winner. You can support this brother at Snap. Landmerch.com snap k clan merch.com. All right, I um shout out to that brother. I'll, I'll do a show where I do QA and have that brother on it, on it sometime soon. But shout out to that brother. Uh, let's see. All right, somebody wants to know, Jew, should we use Arabic, which is naturally rhythmic, or the Hebrew language when talking to ourselves? Will, will our creator give us a tour and some gems? When we see them, okay. So, um, okay, I can't put this. You think about using different languages, Jew. Like, does right. it matter? So, so I, you know, scripture talks about the Tower of Babel, right? Where it became a lot of confusion because people were speaking different tongues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of things, you know, the tower couldn't get completed because of that confusion, and so, um. I would say in your personal space, whatever you're comfortable with the most, um, you use that. Now, when you're breaking these things down in these texts, though, right? Uh, and that's going to be dependent upon which book you're actually reading, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or whichever text that you're reading, then I, I would suggest that you actually break it down in the language that it was written outside of the English. Yeah. Get a firmer understanding, but just like, you know, if you're talking and you're praying in whatever tongue that you typically speak, right? Because see, here's the thing. It's people that are doing this work in English and they're getting results. It's people who right. are doing this work in Hebrew and they're getting results. It's people who are doing this in, you know, Asian languages and they're getting results. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a, it's not a thing where it's like uh, that language is more superior to that language when I'm trying to get in tune with whatever I'm getting in tune with. It's more so about, um, you know, what you're most familiar with. Right. So everybody. So most people in America, they speaking English. So you can you can utter your prayers. You can you know, you can write your scripts in English and get phenomenal results. Somebody was in the chat to my they. They, they took the advice and wrote the letter to themselves in English. And then a month later, they got the job. I just saw somebody say that in the chat. Like, that doesn't really, that's not as big of a deal as I think people make it. But right. um, if you're studying something, you should study it in the language that it was originally written in so that you can get a firmer understanding of mm. what the authors were intending when they wrote it from their tongue. That's different. Excellent. Excellent. All right, let's uh yeah, shout out to uh yeah, every man praising his own language. Indeed, indeed. Uh let me get to the next question. Let me see, let me see. This was an earlier question I, I, I wanted to ask. Um somebody asks, uh Chike asks, are these boys manifesting their reality or have they been so scoped sculpted? I guess sculpted before they got got famous. I'm not sure if I understand the latter part, what they mean by soul scoped it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure what they're trying to ask uh, toward the latter part of their, their question. But what I'm saying is, see, we got to be careful when we use the word manifesting because um, oftentimes we hear that and we automatically associate it with all of the good that life can offer us. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, they are, but not in the sense of the peaches and cream in these instances that I showed. Right. Mm -hmm. They're manifesting 
did all right, but it's coming by way uh, of, a, of a negative outcome from using the wisdom uh, from a place of, of or a lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. a lack of understanding. But they're still manifesting it. It's still happening exactly the way that they're projecting it out, the same way that they are thinking it, the same way that they are speaking it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, you know, and, and the perfect verse for that is, you know, I, I form the light and I create the darkness. So it, they're trying to tell you that it's always two sides, sides to this coin. Mm -hmm. so, so you can manifest the good or you can manifest the bad. However you want to put it, it's, it's, it's still manifesting good or bad or ugly. You know, mm. Mm. indeed, indeed. Uh, let's uh, hmm. let's get to another question. Uh, uh, somebody says, "What is peace to peace priestess three hundred three? What is the science behind Kanye's name Yeezy?" Well, I think he's trying to just play on the whole Jesus phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Kanye, you know, it was it was he made a whole album called Yeezus. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he came right back with an album, Jesus is King. So, um, see, Kanye is a Kanye is a bag full of. I was just having a conversation with Ann Poole. Um, and for those that you know that know um, uh, some of the mystic sciences, the fool, he's the fool in the tarot deck, right? <laughs> Probably. Where you you think he's crazy, right? And he may say some outlandish things sometimes, but it's packed with wisdom behind it. If you if you're able to move past the shock value mm -hmm. of of what's being said at any particular juncture in his narrative, and so you got to you got to be able to know where to place Kanye, um, you know, in in your psychology when you're viewing who he is, because see. In, in one moment, you know, I always had a passion for flashing. Mm -hmm. Before I had it, I closed my eyes and imagined, imagined the good life, right? But then in the next breath, he's 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 talking about or talking to like there's an external Jesus. Right. And then he be in his own when he comes out and he's wearing the Haru chain. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So he's 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 back and forth, right? And you know, through some of his lyrics too, where you realize, okay, he's 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 you know, uh, what did he say on that joint on that life of Pablo? I'm waiting on the out of body experience to happen. That way, I know my life is more than just rapping. Like he be he he conscientious of some things too. Mm -hmm. But I think he was trying to embody that principle of of what people think in their mind to be Jesus. Because, see, if you can associate yourself with that, too, then that also provides a certain level of shielding. Mm. In the psychology of yeah. the, of the people, because yeah. everybody ain't got to this point to understand that this Christ thing is a consciousness. Most people are walking around as though that there was literally an external Jesus. So you start to make that connection to it, right? No matter how blasphemous it may seem at first, the more you hear him refer to himself as that, the law of association starts to kick in, man. Mm, mm, mm. You know. There's some powerful stuff, man. This is some powerful stuff. Let's um we're gonna do one more question. Uh oh, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. Some of these questions Drew already talked about. Um, I, I think some people came out, came in late. Okay. Uh, um, somebody, I don't know if I quite understand it. Somebody says, so regardless, if the lyrics was not your thought form, how does it manifest the thought from one and the utterance from another? Okay, I get it. And the other utterance from another. So you recite another man's lyrics. Oh, listen. Uh, 
you can find yourself in a jam. You, you listen, listen. Uh, all you got to do is look at some of the youth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Just go look at the youth. Go look at your 13, 14, 15 year olds on both sides of the aisle, your girls and your boys. Yeah. They're reciting these lyrics, right? And then they're going out and doing these things that they hear these yeah, people yeah. speak and say. Now, let me tell you something. See, this is where the science is necessary. There was a study done at the University of Princeton where they showed how if, when you had people listening to one speaker, mm -hmm. The people in the audience, their brains literally synced up with the speaker's brain's wavelengths. Do you understand what that means? One person, if 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 their if their vocal expression <clears throat> or their charisma is charged highly enough. They can magnetize a multitude of people. Listen, man, it's called cults. Yeah. How they people listening to one person, no matter how ludicrous it is to the people in the outside, we're like, man, those people are they they didn't lost, they they snapping out mm -hmm. to the people inside who are listening to that one person who has the charisma to draw them in. They think that this person is right and correct on every single thing, even if it's to the people around them's detriment. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're listening to these type of songs and it's constantly ruminating through your consciousness, you may decide to act out some of these things. And your environment matters. Your upbringing matters. Indeed. Because it, everybody that's listening to it is not having that same uh, uh, suggestion or impulse to want to go do that. Why? Because they're not in, in an environment, just like that seed needs to be in a specific environment in order to bloom. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not in the same environment. So some of the suggestions that come in is not going to register or, or hit them at the same level in the subconscious mind. Mm. Mm. So it's a lot of factors that go into just how somebody will act out according to what they've heard, you know? Mm. Hey, Jew, man. Wow. Uh, Got to wrap this up, man. I Got to take off the glass for this one, man. I mean, this was a powerful show tonight, Jew. This was a powerful one, man. And and not just, it wasn't, it was, it was timely. It's very timely for what's going on right now. And it's very timely that us as a culture, we start to understand the effect of our culture that it has on us health wise, um, um, spirit, spiritually, our relationships with each other, women, men, look at our relationships with each other when it comes to women and men, you know, just look at the hip hop culture, look who we following. So it's powerful. It's powerful. Jew, Jew man, uh, any, any last words for the people, uh, for the family before we get yeah. out of here? I'm going to end it with this. Know that you all are ambassadors of the light <clears throat> and always move from that position. H how can you demonstrate in your immediate environment this power, this wisdom to change the life of yourself and others around you? Walk away knowing that. Even mm -hmm. though you saw me go through all these examples mm -hmm. of all of these people who are considered to be stars in the spotlight, mm -hmm. I really just do it to bring, bring it home to you, the individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the power. Use it. Use it. And with that being said, family, I want to thank all of y'all for tuning in tonight. I will be back tomorrow. Don't know it exactly who yet. I got an idea in mind, but, you know, I won't say that right now. But I'll be back tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. Tune in. Minister Jew, I want to thank you once again, brother, for coming on the show. Family, make sure you go to his website. Join the ministry. Become a part of ministry and get that community I was just talking to the brother um, East Snap yesterday in Florida, and I was telling him with all the knowledge that we have floating around, one of the things that we don't have 
that's kind of hurting us as a culture because a lot of us aren't strong enough to carry it out on our own is, is some type of community, that's right. uh, some type of mastermind group, some type of person that you could, you know, we, we, we could, we could help each other with the information and we could, you know, give each other a, a, um inspiration when needed. So that ministry, y'all need to tap into that ministry. Did you leave your website one more time, brother? It's the imaginationguru.com. In fact, we got a guided visualization tonight uh, at midnight, Eastern Ooh. time. We do that. We do that once a month, and it just so happened to be tonight. So I got a double header. So I'm, I'm up. I'm, I'm, I'm riding all the way to the through the night, man. So we we gonna, gonna have thousands of people in there tonight. They coming <laughs> in there. They ain't missing that. Oh they, man! Hold on, hold on, hold up, Jew. They, they they just they they just go to the Imagination Guru. Yep, the ben Imagination Guru You have to mm -hmm. join the membership and ministry from there. And then you'll get a if you like tonight if you just so that's theoretically you join tonight um you'll get a link tonight from us a welcome email getting you started and then you'll get an email for tonight's guided visualization um yeah. and we do that once a month we do guided visualization once a month and we had like three or four phone calls webinars every single month over 30 different techniques it's loaded i can go on for days but if you're interested visit the website read the description and it'll show you everything that you'll get if you join and when you join the ministry Peach Priestess says she she in the website right now. <laughs> she says she there right now. Dude, they ain't playing. You. They ain't playing, man. Hey, family, thank you so much. Drew, I'm gonna see you next soon, brother. Um, send me um Ampoo's number. Will so do I can, so I can holler at him. Family, I appreciate y'all. See you tomorrow. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace, everybody. Peace and love.